going to be straight up like seminary, okay? So we'll, we will really talk and take our time. And I'll probably talk for maybe 10 minutes or so, and then we'll just kind of talk about what we just talked about. Are y'all okay with that? Yeah. We'll talk about what we just talked about. Now, the biggest thing is for this series on the Holy Spirit, so that you'll know, this series is going to be broken into four subtopics, okay? Not tonight. Subtopics meaning each week, all right? Each week, it'll be broken up into four subtopics. And the first one tonight is meet the Holy Spirit, okay? We're meeting him. So essentially, meet the Holy Spirit is really like the introduction of the Holy Ghost, all right? If we were in school, that's what it would be considered, meeting the Holy Spirit. Next week will be the second baptism, the second baptism. Uh, the third week will be the gift of the Spirit, and the fourth week will be the fruit of the Spirit. So I put that on the front side so that you'll know as you start gearing your questions, you know, if you want to talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, wait till next week when the teacher's teaching on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you want to talk about the fruit of the Spirit, hold that one till we start talking about the fruit of the Spirit. It's going to be a different instructor for each one. So your questions will be centered around the topic that we're discussing tonight. So that's why I kind of want to make sure you understand that right out of the gates as we try to go forward tonight. I really want it to be a really productive conversation, but uh, we'll move forward. And tonight's objective will be to introduce, to define, to describe the Holy Spirit biblically, not philosophically. Okay, uh, We're not talking about how it happened in an apostolic church. We're not talking about the Church of God in Christ. We're not talking about the Missionary Baptist. We're not talking about the Episcopalian. We're talking about biblically what the Bible says about meeting the Holy Spirit from the Old Testament and the New Testament. And uh, we're going to explore the Holy Spirit in three areas, creation, Christ, and as the comforter. Cool? Cool, 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 cool. All right, so right out of the gates, we'll discuss the word spirit. Okay, now, it's easy for you to take the picture on the screen. I think that's cool, but if you're really right, I'm telling you to stick with you. It'll help you if you stick, or just type them on your phone. Taking pictures, you're not going to go back and look at those things. Once you start taking all them selfies and stuff, you're going to erase them things, and about another week from now, I'm telling you, it's going to fill your phone up, and I'm going to get rid of these Holy Ghost shots. So go into your notes on your phone. I encourage you to go in there, because that's how you can run with it, because you actually took the time to type it. All right, it sticks with you. All right, so the word spirit, Hebrew, zrua, uh, Greek, pneuma, real simple. Uh, it's a word used in ancient times to describe and explain the experience of divine power. Working in, working upon, around men, and understood by them as the power of God. I have the source up here, too, so you can see where that came from. So Ruick expresses the idea of wind or air in motion. As such, it serves well as a bridge term to describe the outgoing of the creator to the creation. All right? From the creator to the creation. Now, I didn't write down Numa, but I'll give it to you. I wrote it down on paper. So it's the same thing. That's why both of them are there. But just for your notes, if you want to write some extra stuff. You still have air in motion. Uh, you have the word breath. Underneath it, you can also write wind. Except if you know it's wind, you know it's invisible. All right, so you have irresistible, unpredictable, uncontrollable power. At the same time, with all that unpredictable, uncontrollable power, you also have like just light breath, all right? And the impact of energy, vitality that goes into every living creature, okay? To add to that, he's action. He's energy at work. He's everywhere and always present. Am I going too fast? Okay. 
Okay, how far you want me to go back? He's energy at work. He's energy at work. He's everywhere. And always present to create, recreate, sustain, order, renew, and revive. Okay? Renew and revive. Now, I am not going to assume that everybody knows that information. That's why I'm taking my time to do it. So for those of y'all that are super deep, got 15 doctorates in pneumatology, we're going to go very, very slow, okay? We're going to walk from bottom to the top. All right, y'all got that? All right, let's move. All right, so when you start looking at the Lord's power, the presence of revealed in the Holy Spirit, and to view a fulfilling variety of goals in redemptive history, you should write this down. He not only carries individuals beyond the normal physical capacities, he gives them abilities which extend beyond their native wit. The Holy Spirit distributes gifts. The Holy Spirit decides who gets what gifts. Okay? He gives the gifts. He gives the gifts. And he also moves you beyond your natural wit. So all the characters that you saw in the scripture that moved beyond those physical abilities and a natural wit were moved upon by the power of God. Elijah, the Holy Ghost moves upon him. Elisha, the Holy Ghost moves upon him. Everybody through the scriptures, you see the Holy Ghost moving upon them. Everybody shout, upon them. Upon them. All right, y'all got that so far? All right, we good. So then who is the Holy Spirit? It's God. All right? The Holy Spirit... We're already talking about that he's God, all right? He is part of the Godhead that lives on the earth, all right? Now, we'll keep going. What is the Godhead? You know, the Godhead is explained several different ways, and we're not here tonight to argue about Trinitarian and uh, Jesus only. That's not what we're here to do. The Godhead, we're talking about the Godhead, and of course we know God, Jesus, Spirit, okay? So, so for the sake of those of you that are in the room that do not know, you hear sometimes people talk about th God in three persons, God in three forms, however you want to call it. We're not going to spend time arguing about that. What we do know is that God is in heaven, but we do know. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, okay? And we do know that he left the Spirit here for us, and we know that they make one. There's one God, all right? So Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. So if Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, where is God? He's in heaven, all right? That's what we got. Now, Romans 8.34. Romans 8.34. Let's read it together. Ready, read. Who then is the one who? No one. Christ Jesus died. More than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and is also interceding. All right. So the reason I had you read it, the reason why I have you see it, is so as we talk about the Holy Ghost, again, this is not philosophical expression. Everything we're giving you here is biblical. So if you ask the question, you can say it. Hey, man, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. How do you know? Romans 8. It tells me right here, Romans 8, 34. Now, the part of the Godhead, uh, of course, Jesus left him here for us. If we flip over to Romans 10, of course, a famous scripture everybody knows, but let's go to it. Romans 10, and let's look at verses 8 through 13, okay? Let's look at verses 8 through 13. I think this is important so that we know that the Holy Spirit is God. Jesus leaves the Holy Spirit here with us. You got it? All right, good. So let's let this table right here, can y'all read it for all of us loud? This one table right here to my right. But what does it say? The word is near you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message to turn your mouth. Jesus is the Lord. If you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is 
with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As Scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all, and we are to let us all fall on him. All right, y'all, are y'all done? No. Oh, okay, keep going. All right, so everyone that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Y'all clap your hands and make them feel really good, all right? All right. There's two reasons why I made you read that scripture. Number one, one of the things that we always say in church, and I say we, I say we, is that Jesus is living in your heart. You know, we get to that point, we say, well, confess Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Now Jesus is living in your heart, all right? He's really not because he's at the right hand of the Father. Okay? So... Yes, they're one. Go back to the Godhead so there's no confusion. But there's nowhere in that verse where you saw what Jesus lived in your heart. All right? But you had your mouth had to confess that Jesus is what? That Jesus is Lord. So then who's living in you? The Holy Spirit is living in you. All right? The Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of Jesus is living in you. One who he left here to live in you. We're not talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the deep people. We're not talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We're talking about when you got saved, if, if Jesus is living in you, there's no man living in your body, okay? There's no natural man standing up in you. The Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of Jesus is living in you. That's why I had you read that Jesus is seated where? He's seated at the right hand of the Father. So the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of Christ is seated in you right now as we speak. Now, as we continue to look at uh, what we're talking about here, let's go to the next slide. What is my next slide? Now let's look at this slide. Can we get this table to read this slide? Even to this day, we have the All right, clap your hands. Y'all need some help over there. <laughs> All right, so who is the Spirit? The Lord. Who is the Lord? Right, so that's why I had you read this. I want you to see this for yourself. This is not philosophical. This is biblical. All right, this is, the bib this is biblical. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Freedom. All right, then he says, and we all go with unveiled faces. I put the context of the scripture in there because remember, that's talking about when Moses saw the glory of God, he had to veil his face. So then when you come down here and you look where it says, who with unveiled faces, that's us, contemplate the Lord's glory, we're being transformed, wow, into his image with what? glad that you have the spirit of God because that's how you're constantly transforming oh they told me to get the microphone Lord have mercy can y'all hear me now that's why you uh, that's why you want to give homage to the Holy Spirit so you have so many people saying man I wish I was walking in Jesus's day you are so you don't think like that because all of us have been taught to believe okay well he's gone no he said I'm gonna get ahead of myself all right so let's stay here <laughs> so now, the Lord's glory is being transformed into his image with what? Ever-increasing glory. So if it's ever-increasing, it's been increasing since he came. All right? It's ever-increasing glory since the, the, the word that made flesh dwelled amongst us has been increasing in glory, which comes from the Lord who is? So who is the Holy Spirit? The Lord. The Holy Spirit is the Lord. All right? So are you all okay with it? Well, it doesn't matter if you're okay with it. All right? It's what the Bible says, all right? It's the part of the Godhead that we've got to understand, and we've got to be thankful that he is here. Let's go to the next slide. So we take a look at this next slide, all right? So 
I put this here, the word became flesh and made his what? Dwelling. Made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only son who came from the father, full of what? Grace. All right. So we've got the Lord. God so loved the world, he gives his only begotten. All right. And what does the son do? The son gives his life, but he gives his life in what? The flesh. So he gives his life in the flesh. So we have the Lord who is seated in heaven. Son comes to earth. Son comes to earth, and he does what nobody can do because of who? Adam. All right? The first man, Adam, sins, messes up. We have to have an advocate, the first advocate. Jesus comes. He lives his life 33 years. And as he lives his life 33 years, then he in return says, I'm going to do what? I'm going to leave the spirit. I'm going to leave the spirit here so that you can live. Now, this is important because of the scriptures that we quote about greater works. All right? So when we, talk, we start talking about greater works, what, what happens with greater works? It's not that you're going to do something that Jesus had never done before. What happens is that if we had to go, if we had to experience the power of Jesus, we'd have to get on the plane, fly over to the Middle East. We'd have to go find where he lived, and then we'd have to go wait in that long line because the whole world would be trying to get to Jesus so he could use his power on us. But what he did here was release. And when he released that, what made it greater? Now he's not just in one place. Where is he? He's everywhere. So he's walking through you and I. So the greater works are greater works because we are outnumbering one man. He has placed himself in millions of people in the earth. And so the spirit of Christ, the spirit of God, is living inside of you as we speak right now. So when you do something, who gets the glory? God gets the glory. So when you look at it, it's just full circle. It's full circle. Seated with the right hand of the Father. Boom. He leaves. That's exactly what you see. All right? So that makes it very, 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 very simple. What else do I have on those notes before I go? Let's take a look at this. Go to the next slide. This is what I need to get to. All right, I want the first table to my far left. Go find Hebrews 9.14. The table behind you, go find one, uh, Psalms 139 and 7. The table right here, I want you to go find uh, Zechariah 4 and 6, Romans 8 and 11, and 15 and 19, all right? And then I want this table to go find Isaiah 57, 15. This table, Isaiah 59, 17 through 19. That table, I want you to go find Nehemiah 9 and 20. With Mark 10 and 18, this table, you go find John 14 and 17, that table 15 and 26, that table in the corner 16 and 13, and I believe this table will take the last one, Psalms 51, 12, and you can take a look at it. So your table can grab that, and then we'll talk about it real quick, all right? Did I forget some people on the wall? Y'all find John 3 and 8. So this table... Could just take Psalms 51 and 12. So all of these words are descriptors of the Holy Spirit. Okay? They're all terms descriptive of the Holy Spirit. I want you to find them for yourself because remember, the objective of the class is not philosophical. It's biblical. So you can go find what he is. Find who's living in you. Okay? Find who's living in you. Who has the first table? Uh, 914. Read it to us out loud, please. I thought y'all said y'all had it. It doesn't matter. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit? Through what kind of spirit? Eternal. So how what so what is the spirit of God? He's what? Eternal. He's eternal. Let's move to the next table. Psalms 139 and 7. Who got it? Read it. Oh, no, no, no. Y'all got to come on now. Come on. Oh, my God. Come on, class. So what does that mean? He's what? 
He's everywhere. You can't, you can't get away from him. He's saying, where can I go? All right, so he's omnipresent. Let's go to the next one, 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. Who has that one? Y'all lost it? 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. Nobody got that one? All right, so somebody find it. Who got it? You got to read it out loud, good brother. So where is he? he ser- he's everywhere. He searches everything. You can't get away from him. He's looking at all things. Who's got the next one? Romans 8, 11, 15, and 19. Let's talk about it. Come on. Go ahead. You're good. What does he live? In you. It's the Spirit of God who did what? Now, these scriptures all have been in your Bible all this time which does not limit the Holy Ghost to okay? You need to know about him so you can describe him to believers who don't know about that, okay? Because the Holy Ghost is more than speaking in tongues. He's intelligent. He's divine. He's God. So if he is God, then you should be able to tell us about him. That's why I put all of these up here so you can have them as reinforcement, as tools. Let's go to the next one. Who's got the next scripture? So the Holy Spirit is what? He's holy. He's holy. Those are, those are ammunition for you. That's ammunition for you. Isaiah 59, 17 through 19. Come on. Put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. According to what they have done, so will he repay. Wrath to his enemies and retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands their due. From the west, people will fear the name of the Lord. And from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent up flood that will break, that will, that the breath of the Lord drives. Now, if you listen to how the Bible describes him, it will help you when you're dealing with whatever situations that you're having. If you notice how he's being described in text, this is here on purpose so you understand how empowered you are with the Holy Spirit living in you, that he is more than a quickening. He is more than a shout, and he is more than a 15-second praise break, okay? Where are we? We should be at Nehemiah 9 and 20 and Mark 10 and 18. Thou gavest also thy good... Praise the Lord, sister. ...to instruct them, and withheldest not thy manna from their mouth, and gavest them water for their thirst. He's a good God, all right? Let's go to John 14, 17. Okay, we'll go ahead and read it then. You didn't... Did somebody find it? Who got it? He is a good God. Now you know what that is when people are saying he's a good God, all right? It's not just a song. God is a good God. Yes, he is. It's Bible, all right? Let's go to John 14, 17. John 14, 17. Who had it? Nobody? He is the Holy Spirit who leads what? Into all truth. All right. Who has the next one? 1526. But I will send you the advocate, the spirit of truth. He will come to you from the Father and will testify all about you. Hear him? All right. Let's keep going. I, want to, I really want to teach the mess out of that one, but I got a whole lot of slides to go to. But read that one more time, especially those of you that are new. Read that again. I want you to read it real, real, real loud. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Did you hear that? 
He's the spirit of truth. He doesn't speak on his own. He'll tell you what's to come, all right? He only speaks the truth. He only speaks the truth. All right, let's keep going. Last one should be he is sovereign. That should be Psalms 51, 12, John 3, 8. Who has that? Go ahead, sister. Now, let me tell you why that's important, what you just read. Because sometimes when you do wrong, you think God's going to run away from you. And so you will pray prayers, don't take your spirit away from me. And he said, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to live in you. All right? I want to live in you. That's a very powerful scripture. Keep going. Next one. Next one. Okay. Shh, hold on. Who's, who's that? Go with it. Let me hear you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One more time. Only God's spirit gives you life. The spirit is like the wind that blows wherever it wants to. You can hear the wind, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. Did you hear that? Read it one more time out loud. Only God's spirit gives what? Life. life. Read. The spirit is like the wind that blows wherever it wants to. Wherever wants to. Read. You don't know where it comes from, and you don't know where it's going. So the only thing you can do is based off of everything you just read about the Holy Spirit is know that he is of the truth. He is the truth. And if he is the truth, then you have to trust his direction. Okay? He is more than a shout. He is more than a praise break. He is more than tongues. He is more than prophecy. Y'all got it so far? Next slide. We got a lot of this stuff right here. All right? He speaks. Go find it. Somebody go find Mark 11. He instructs Nehemiah 9 and 20. All right? Somebody find Acts 5.32. Somebody find 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. Somebody find John 6.63. Somebody find Romans 8.26. Somebody find 8, uh, Acts 13 and 4. And somebody find Acts 20.28. 20, this is about the Holy Spirit. Mark, 11, thir Mark, Mark 13 and 11, who got it? Did y'all hear that scripture? <laughs> okay. That is a powerful verse. Can you read that one more time? Come on. Yo, you just read it, sis. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given to you in that hour. That speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. So what is he, what is he telling you about the Holy Ghost right there? Y'all talk to me. What is he telling you? He'll tell you what to say. But the only time you can trust that he'll tell you what to say is unless you believe that he's real and unless you believe that he's the spirit of what? Truth. If you believe he's the spirit of truth, if you believe he's the spirit of truth, then you will trust what he's telling you, all right? Are y'all understanding this? That's why I'm giving it to you so basic, because if you get this, it ain't about the hika mashanda. That's what I keep saying to you over and over and over and over again. If the only thing you got is oh, bo, 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 you ain't got much, okay? You don't have much because the Holy Ghost is intelligent. The Holy Ghost is intelligent, I'm not saying that speaking in tongues is not because I speak in tongues. That's not what I'm talking about. I just want you to know it is so, he is so much deeper than tongues. All right? Next verse. Who's got it? Who got the next verse? Anybody get Acts 13 too? Okay, hold on. Read it loud. Where'd you go? Come on, read it loud. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the Lord unto which I have called them. All he's, all he's saying to us is that the Spirit is speaking, the Spirit is speaking, the Spirit is speaking. So if you don't hear him talking to you and you're the only one doing the talking, then we have to question your Holy Ghost. If you're the only one talking 
and you don't hear him talking, something's wrong. Who has Nehemiah 9 and 20? Nehemiah 9 and 20. Did you read it earlier? All right, we're going to move on past that. Who got, who got John 14, 26? Did y'all hear that? He will teach you what things? things. And he'll bring what things to you? To your what? If you're going to bring it to your remembrance, you've had to have had a conversation with him. You've had to have spent some time with him. All right? So we're talking about the Holy Ghost. Again, we are not talking about an event. We are talking about a relationship with God. We're talking about a relationship with God. All right, let's go to uh, Acts 5.32. Who got it? He is God's gift to who? No, he's not God's gift to everyone. He's God's gift to everyone who what? There you go. Finish the verse. He is not God's gift to everyone. He is God's gift to everyone who obeys God. So if you don't obey God, he ain't your gift. All right? You have to obey him. All right? That could possibly be the problem why you don't hear him. Glory to God in his holy temple. All right, where are we? Romans 8, 16? The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. The Spirit himself testifies with who? With you. That, that what? That scripture is important because without the Holy Spirit left to yourself, you will believe that you are what you did. And you have to have his spirit to know that you can overcome what you did. You are not what you did. You just did something you didn't have no business doing or something happened to you that you had no control over and you are not what happened to you. You are what the Holy Ghost says you are and who's the Holy Ghost? He's God. He's God. He's God. God. All right, next verse. Should be what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What verse you got? First Corinthians. Come on, let's go. But God has shown us these things through spirit. The spirit knows all things, even the deep secrets of God. Who knows the secrets of God? He knows all things. So this is why you want to have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. Who's living in you? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. All right? The Holy Spirit's living in you. This is why we got to start calling his name, that you cannot limit the Holy Spirit to a moment, a moment. And I'm going to stay there for those of you that are old. It's okay. But I want to stay there for those that don't know. He's God. No, you don't have to separate them because they're what? One. They're one. You just need to know the Godhead. Go ahead. Who is it? You don't move the spirit. He moves upon you. You move, he moves upon you, and you stay in the will of God. Okay? Because why do you want to move him when he knows everything? I would rather be with the one who knows and let the one who knows do what? Move me. Glory to God. I wish I had a witness in here. Because that's the problem. What you're saying is the exact problem. I want to move God. God. And God is saying, we ain't going nowhere. Stay right here. Even though you don't like how it feels. How you think, how you think all those guys felt that was following God? You think they wanted to move? Oh, yeah, move me out of here. But he left them right there. All right? And it was those testimonies that gave you the power to overcome what you're going through. All right? So that's why you got to get to know him. And I'm so glad you asked that question. We lost everything. Okay. So, so I'm glad you asked that question. Give her a hand, please. Where, where are we? John 6, 63? Okay, read it. Who got it? Hold on, let's go back. The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. Did y'all hear that? The spirit gives life. 
This is why we're talking about the Holy Spirit. He gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. So we don't want to be in the flesh all the time. We want to be in the spirit. Next verse. What we got? In the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Did you catch that, sister, the one that you wanted to move? You don't want to move. Come on, read it one more time. In the same way. In the same way. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to We do not know. What we ought to pray for. What we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself. But the Spirit who? <laughs> Means he don't need your assistance. I wish I had a witness in here tonight. Glory to God. Read. Intercedes for us. What? Through wordless groans. Through what? Wordless groans. That means you don't have to have the words. You don't have to have the words because he knows. How does he know? He's God. Is that everything? That's everything. It sounds so good. I was coming back. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, so where are we? Acts 13 and 4? Go ahead, sir. King James Version says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for no, for we know not what we should pray, for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself maketh intercession for Himself with groanings which cannot be uttered. Cannot be uttered. <laughs> so, who's the greatest intercessor in the world? Holy Spirit is the most powerful intercessor. So this is why I'm putting all these scriptures up there to get you to understand what you have when you say you have the Holy Ghost, that the Holy Ghost is more than what? Speaking in tongues. He's more than shouting and dancing. He's more than snot coming out of your nose. He's more than you running. If it's limited to that, you don't have much. But if you get all this stuff I just gave you right here tonight, you got power. You got major power. Because God is saying, look, let me guide you. I'm only going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to lie to you. But the only way you don't believe him is by not spending any time with him. Yeah. Uh, Doctor, and you might have already answered this, but my sister that's on the wall over there, if I was interpreting what she was asking, it sounded like she was saying, how do you activate the Holy Spirit within you? So like, if you the like Holy Spirit is living in us, like, how is it activated? He's already activated. You can't turn him on. He Remember when I defined him? He's Numa. He's Ruach. He's already air in motion. He's God in motion. He's not dead. He's not stale. He's God. He's always moving. So it, it, is not a, it is not a me turning him on. It is you spending time with God understand what's already on in you. Yes. Only activate if we obey. How do you obey him? No, 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 no. That's not a that's not that's not a dumb question. But it's but it's it's not a dumb question. No dumb question. Shh. You give up control. You have to surrender. You have to surrender. You gotta surrender. Now there's only two ways, there's only two ways for it to go. You either willful surrender or you be broken. Most people just get broken and then try to find it. Okay? But if you, if you, if, and here's, and here's my thing. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. How do you trust that plane in the air? How do you trust the pilot that you've never met that's flying that plane? You, you, don't, you don't know him. But why'd you get on the plane? But why'd you get on the plane? You, you didn't get on that plane because of God. You got on that plane because you wanted to go somewhere. So you got to act. That's why, that's why we're having this class. That's a great question. Okay? I want to get to know him. Okay? I want a relationship with him, okay? As I get to know him, it's no different than you get to know anybody else. The more you get to know him, the more you want to find out about him. That's why this class is simply called 
meeting the Holy Yeah, he's speaking through wind. He's speaking through pictures. He's speaking through me. He's speaking through people telling you no. He's speaking through stuff telling you yes. He's speaking when we vacuuming and you see a line. You're like, man, that's a straight line. Get straight. It's a, it's, <laughs> now, you're laughing, but it depends on where you are in life. Depends on what starts speaking to you. Okay? Because God can use where you are. You could be in jail, and when you're in jail, carceration speaks to you. And you start saying, you know what? I need to get myself together so I can have my what? Freedom back. So where you are, God will use where you are to talk to you. <laughs> Is it possible for me to build my spirit up through prayer? Yes. Yes. And therefore, making me more sensitive to yes. the things of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And therefore, having a spirit within me. Absolutely. What does, what does Jude tell us? To build ourselves up in our most holy what? Absolutely. 100%. Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 Is it possible for the Holy Spirit to show you someone that you've never seen? or? Yes. But you know when this person comes, whether they're going to be good or bad for you. Discernment. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And you can pray for that. Okay? You can pray for that. Um, does the Holy Spirit increase or, de or decrease in us by how close we are to God? Or is it always the same? Like, do we all have the same? Who is the Holy Spirit? He's God. So do we all have the same portion of God? Or is it like you get more the more you know Scripture or the more you spend time with Him? You don't get more of God. You just start knowing what God has given you. Because God has given himself to you. The only person who had the spirit of God without measure was Jesus. He had every gift that you could imagine. All right? Now, God gives you himself. And then as you grow in God, as you get developed in God, which is what you're doing tonight. Is there anything you learned in here tonight that you didn't know? So you're just increased. Because you increased in what? Knowledge. And if you can increase in knowledge, you can increase in what? Wisdom. So yes, but that's already there. You just had to open yourself up to it. So all the God that we're going to get is already in us. How much more God do you need? No. No, 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 no. Like, how much more God do you need? You got him. You just don't know what you have. Yes. And when that increases, who increases? Because you just increased tonight. Did you take any of these? Did you write all this down? So you just increased tonight. So if you increase tonight, you got what? Stronger. And you, you know right now that when people start talking about, man, I got the Holy Ghost, I got the Holy Ghost, I got the Holy Ghost, I got the Holy Ghost. If they got the Holy Ghost, who do they have? And if they got God, then they got the truth, they got a comforter, they got an advocate. You got it. You got everything. You just don't know who you have. Okay? So that's why we, that's why we call this class meeting who you got. That's what I should have put on there instead of meeting the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> you meeting who you got. So it's no different than this. You date a man, you don't know who you got till you do what? Spend time with him. Because if you're only going out on a date every blue moon, you're going to get the best him every time. But if you keep on going, you're going to find out what's all beneath that flesh. All right? You're going to keep finding, you're going to find out more and more and more. It's the same way with God. Read that word every day. Just like she said, build your faith every day. Grow in the kingdom every day. Find out what you have. When we're saying, I have the Holy Spirit, you got more than tongues. You got more than a dance. You got more than a shout. You got all this that you just, that you just got. And we ain't even halfway done with this class. We just started. Okay? All right, good question. Where were we? Who got the Acts 13 and 4? Shh, 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 shh. Hold on. Right here. Where was we? Where were we? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. Read again. The two of them sent on their way by the Holy Spirit went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. So the scripture is telling you who sent them. The Holy Spirit sent them. All right. A lot of times you hear people saying, the Spirit send, sent me here. And, you, and some people will look at them like they're crazy. What do you mean the Spirit sent you? Ain't nobody just sent you. No, nobody didn't send me. God did. All right. So I put that in there on purpose because you hear that quite common. 
God told me to come here. That's in the Bible. Okay? God told me to come here. Go to the next verse. Should be what? Okay. So who appointed the overseers in the church? The Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit speaks to leaders, and the Holy Spirit tells the leaders who to appoint. All right? Next slide. Next slide. I'm going to move fast. I'm sorry. Symbols for the Holy Spirit. All right? You got the dove symbol, gentleness, peace. All right? So if you take a look at that, you look at uh, Matthew 3, 16 through 17, God is pleased that the Holy Spirit descended. He descends upon Christ in the form of a dove. We've all heard that particular scripture. I put that up here on purpose because the dove is not the Holy Ghost. The dove is a what? Symbol. It is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So when you see the dove on the back of somebody's car, that doesn't mean God. That means it's a sign of him. It's a sign of the Holy Spirit. All right? Uh, also, patience. Matthew 10, 16, the Holy Spirit is never harmful he always helps. The Holy Spirit is not harming you. Even if you feel like your situation is pretty loaded with pressure, there's something God wants you to learn from that circumstance, from that situation. All right, let's go to the next one. Seal symbol, which is ownership. Let's go to uh, John 6, 37. I want somebody to go grab that scripture, and then I want somebody to go grab Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. All right? The seal. John 6, 37. Who has that one? John 6, 37, you're sealed, you're covered. He's not going to cast you out, all right? He's not going to cast you out. doesn't matter what happened. If you come to him, you've been sealed by him. Uh, Ephesians 1, 13, 14, who got it? And whom he also trusted after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that he believed, he was <coughs> sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed with what? We'll sit with the Holy Spirit of promise. All right, let's keep moving. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Praise the Lord. Y'all got that? All right, let's move to the next one. The oil. It's approval. It's oil. It's oil. What's the oil? It's approval. All right, this is about the anointing. When you see anointing, kings got anointed. Different people, prophets got anointed. All right, that's one sign of the anointing, but then you also see where the anointing all is also approval upon your life, that the spirit is coming upon you. You have been approved to do what you do by God. All right. Uh, Luke 4 and 18, and somebody grab Acts 10, 38. Who got it? Fear of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me All of this is about the Holy Ghost. Y'all got this? All right, let's go Acts 10, 38. Thank you, sir. Acts 10, thank you for the brother reading the scripture. I love when the men read. Acts 10, 38. Who got it? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. Read that one more time. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Who got anointed? If he got anointed, don't you think you need to be anointed? With the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. God was with him. That means you don't need to fear the devil when you got the Holy Ghost. Are y'all hearing me? All right, move quickly. Move, 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 move. How do you get anointed? Well, here's a good question. That's a great question, all right? First of all, that was a symbol, remember? What's the topic? What was the, what was the topic? Symbolisms of what? So, when we have altar call, you come down and you want to get what? Anointed. You want to get prayed for. We take the oil. We smear. That's the first thing anointing means, to smear, okay? To cover. Place the anointing over you, all right? Now, that is the, uh, what's the correct word? 
I mean, you, it's not symbolism, but as a religious movement that happens, all right? That happens at the altar, all right? That's, that, that doesn't mean it's fake. That, that's something that we do. But then there is an anointing that has nothing to do with oil, all right? That has to do with what you're doing, what you're doing right now. You're spending time with God. You're studying your word. You're building your faith. You're fasting. You're consecrating. And you are becoming anointed under the hands of God to do what you do. And when that happens, the scripture that he read Miracles and signs and wonders follow your life because you're anointed to do it, all right? You've given your life over to God, and you become anointed for it. Amen? All right. Yes? How do you know you're being led by the Holy Spirit versus your own thoughts and instincts? That's a very good question. Very good question. So the first question is, have you spent time with God? That's the first question. If you haven't spent time with him, then you know you ain't being led by him, Okay? Second, when you are depressed, isolated, frustrated, what happens? You pull what? Pull away. And you're left to who? You're left to yourself. All right? You're left to yourself. And when you're left to yourself, who's leading you? You're leading you. Correct? Correct? So my question is, what is your practice? What is your relationship like with God? It's more so that if I start spending time with God and I start researching what God says, I'm not talking about just getting on my knees and talking about philosophy. That's why I got the first thing I said in the class was what? We will find out who he is what? Biblically. So when I find out that he's all of this, I start understanding how God moves. I start understanding how God speaks. I start understanding what God does. I'm tracing history, how he has dealt with other men and women through scripture. And God will speak to you. All right? But that is a personal relationship with God. Because one thing, God speaks to me completely different than he speaks to Bishop. Completely different than he speaks to my wife. We have a different relationship with God. God deals with me through dreams. God deals with me through pain. So I can come in a room and have a neck ache. And I know somebody in the room is dealing with neck pain. I don't have it. I can come in the room and have a piercing feeling in my forehead. I know that somebody in the room has migraine headaches. I can come in the room and my left kneecap is hurting. I already know there's a person in the room that's having knee issues, possibly some surgery or possibly an issue. That's how God speaks to me. But that had to be developed. All right? That didn't come overnight. I was trying to figure out what that was. How did I get developed? By doing this, what I'm doing right now. Finding out the basic information, then start building and building and building and building. That's why it's called discipleship. We can go even farther. When Jesus calls the disciples, he calls them one by one. He sends them two by two. But when he takes them out, they come back and say, you know what? I tried this in your name, and it didn't work. Jesus didn't say, I'm firing you because you don't know my word. Jesus said, come on, let's talk about it. And then he walks down there, and he shows them how to do it. Some of these come by fasting and prayer. All right? So he's showing them. It's a process that you have to develop over time. And if you're being led, you will learn how to listen to God. Was that all right? Yeah. You all right? All right. I, I want to thank you because when we started out, a lot of people grew up in church hearing this. The Holy Spirit is in here. Right. If you already know, just tell us. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want you to share. Why are you calling the Holy Spirit he? Well, he's, well, God called him he. The Bible called him he. All right? The Bible calls him he. That's my first answer. Now, you tell me why you. Yeah. The reason I say he because the Holy Spirit is a personality. He has a personality. He's a person with a personality. He's not just a personality. Yeah. This is a gift. This is a heat. Living, like you said, Ruah, living, breathing. So I appreciate you sharing that because a lot of people would refer to the Holy Spirit as heat. Never been that way. Always been. Yeah, that's a, that's that's pretty common. People have been calling him it for a long time. Go ahead. 
Um, I know we talk about the Holy Spirit, great, great class, great class, is that we need to learn to talk to him. That's another way because like you, like the uh, uh, doctor said, whoever you don't spend time with, you don't get to know them. That's right. Many of the times because we were raised in church to speak in tongues of, oh, all right, all right. Okay. What I'm saying is about the Holy Spirit is I know for relationship wise and intimacy with him, I know we grew up in churches where we are told to speak in tongues a lot. Nothing is wrong with that. But you need to understand you can talk to him. That's another portion of things that we don't do. We go into our prayers to pray to God, to read scriptures to him, but we don't even talk to him about what we're going through. Sometimes you know about the speaking in tongues, we speaking in tongues so much or praying over stuff. Sometimes you just have to look at it, Lord, I need help. Can you help me here? I'm struggling with my uh, Christian walk. Holy Spirit, you are within me. Help me out. And then also, when you pray the prayer, say, Lord, I need to know you. Holy Spirit, help me to hear your voice. You have to be submissive first. That's why you were saved. Once you are submissive and you let the Holy Spirit, you can talk to him. He will talk to you. How do you know is the Holy Spirit talking to you? Things that are not convenient for you to do, that's him talking to you. The enemy will not tell you to do anything scripturally correct. So you should know that. For instance, you are in church, the Holy Spirit telling you give that $10 that you know is the most important $10 to you right now. That's not the devil talking. That's not your mind talking. That's the Holy Spirit telling you to do something because he wants to open the door. It's just that the Holy Spirit is telling you, do not get in your car. You have to identify, am I the one being afraid, or is the Spirit of God speaking to me? Sometimes you might be delayed for you to get on the road. He's trying to avoid you being involved in an accident. So we need to understand that I'm speaking from my own experience also. Because I was, I was supposed to be on the road one time. The weather was so bad, I was in Nebraska. That morning, I could not explain why I was just going around and circle with my apartment. I didn't leave. Ten minutes later, I left. Somebody died. The road I know would have took. If I left ten minutes earlier, that would have been me. So we need to understand the Spirit of God will speak to you, but you have to learn to talk to him. It doesn't matter. You don't have to pray for five hours. Nothing wrong with that. Just conversation in your car. You're driving to work. Lord, I need your help. Help me here. Lord, who do I need to be a blessing to? Those things you are making yourself submissive to be able to hear him. It's not just what I can get. But, Lord, how can I be a blessing? So those are the things. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Mercy. I was trying to wait on you, but you just kept going. <laughs> Absolutely correct. You just kept on going. You would not stop it. I knew once I found out that you had an African accent, you were not going to stop. That you was going to continue to go and show us the way. Everybody shout Hallelujah. <laughs> I love you, good brother. I love you, man. <laughs> Absolutely right. At the end of the day, we build relationship with him. We build good. relationship. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you said about your feeling of pain or you have need or something, how do you distinguish if that's you? I mean, that's... I know it's not me. It's very abstract. I know it's... But that's why I said me. Right. And I made a statement that you have to learn how God deals with you. That has happened over time for me, okay? First of all, that's prophetic, okay, which is a whole nother class. It's a whole nother class. So those were areas that I was afraid to trust God in early until I got developed. So I had to sit and be discipled. Yeah, you got to trust. That's what I'm telling you. You have to trust. So to go stand up in front of somebody and say, man, I feel the, the Lord, somebody in this room is having, that's, you, what if you're wrong? That's the whole thing I'm thinking back in the day. Man, I'm, I'm not going to get up and say that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. And then the whole deal, when I get up and sing after people preach, I don't make those songs up. People always say, man, you be making songs up. No, I'm singing what I hear. Yeah. I don't, I'm not up there just thinking of lyrics like he's telling me what to say. That's where my prophetic gift started growing first. Because I started learning how God deals with me, yeah. how he deals with me, okay? And then I started trusting him. There are areas where I still am not quite like, yo, I don't know. So I have to have a teacher. And my teacher helps disciple me through those areas. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. 
Hold on. So I heard somebody somebody tell me that they don't need to come to church or read the Bible because they have the Holy Spirit. And so I I don't think that that's true. If you if you have access to a Bible or church, I don't think that you can really grow in Christ if you neglect those things. It's not for me to agree or disagree, but what I wouldn't have I wouldn't have that conversation with that person because they already have their mind made up. Right. It becomes a foolish argument just to pull you in to argue with you. If that's what you believe, God bless you. I'm going to church. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Those are, that, that is a an argument. That's not a conversation. Yeah. There are a couple of scriptures read tonight where uh, we've been sealed. Spirit and Jesus said, What has been given to me can never be taken away. Is that, is that, oh, okay. Um, that was a couple of scriptures read tonight where we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit, and another uh, scripture where Jesus said, What has been given to me can never be taken away. Is that the same as once saved, always saved? And so, no matter what I try to do, it's not in my hands anymore. I'm sealed. Let me, let me, let me answer that portion of the question. If you've been saved, then you're saved. If you haven't been saved, you're not saved. Let's be clear. You can't save yourself, and no other religion can save you. No other God can save you. We don't go to hell for sin. Jesus paid the price for that. What did he die for? He who knew no sin became that we may become. No, 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 answer it. He who knew no sin became that we may become in Christ Jesus. All right? So say it again. He who knew no sin became sin that we may. Did you do anything to become righteous? What did you do to become righteous? You believed that what? That he died for what? Your sins. All right? So if you believe he died for your sin, it is not the sin that sends you to hell. It is the fact that you don't believe. Keep going. If I believe, that's going to help me live a better life. We're not talking about lip service. We're talking about what the scripture says. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. We're not talking about going to the altar and just repeating what the preacher said. Okay? So there's a huge difference there. So we're not going to take away from the simplicity of what God said, but we're also not going to come over and say, I can just go do whatever I want to do, and now I'm saved. That's not what we're saying. If we are saved, we have a relationship with God, and you're going to do the best you can to honor who? God. Your kids, are, they don't stop being your kids because they messed up. They're your what? Your kids. You teach them how to, to move forward in your relationship. And so what does the believer do? Re-what? What does he do? Repent. Y'all mad about that. Isn't that it's, 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 it's interesting to me? Like you want it to be hard. Like you want God to kill you and send you to hell. Like you just want him to send you to hell. That's not what it's about. He wants you to believe in him. And if you believe in him, if you have a relationship with him, just like if you decide to get married, who is it up to to be faithful? It's up to you. No, man, I'm talking about the other person. We're talking about you. If you believe in him, you're not going to change just because you believe in him. You're going to believe in him because you are having a relationship with him. Let's keep the responsibility in the conversation. A lot of times we talk about salvation without responsibility. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about believing him, building a relationship, building yourself up on your most holy faith. If you're doing all of that, you are not going to do all the crap that you used to do before you gave yourself to Jesus Christ. You're not going to because you're not going to feel good about it. And the Holy Ghost is going to convict you. He's going to convict you because he's living in you. There's no, it's impossible. Now, if you're not saved, you do what you want to do. 
And if you're not building your relationship with him and your relationship with God was when Bishop stands up and say, you want to be saved, come down here. This is the best Bible teaching church in America. And you come down here and we say, uh, for, uh, whatever we say, uh, I believe that Jesus raised him from the dead and right now I'm saved. And that's the end of your relationship. You don't have much of anything because you didn't do what? It's just like you getting married, going on a honeymoon, and then you and your husband will never see each other again. You ain't got no marriage. Y'all had a ceremony. You had a wedding, but you don't have a what? Marriage. So I hope that was a, a, a clear answer that I am not saying that you can do what you want to do. I'm saying that it's a relationship, that you're building a relationship with God. We got two minutes, that's it? Jesus. I'll go to the next slide. All right, so get that right there. Rain symbol. <laughs> Wind symbol. We got two minutes? That's y'all asking all the questions. Yeah, that's me. Good. Right. Are y'all okay with this, the way, we, the way we went tonight? I don't know. All right. All right, let's go to the next one real quick, real quick. Hit it all. Hit it all. Oh, go, go back. My God, y'all got to get faster now. Let me get out of the way. I'm sorry. All right, y'all got it? All right, go to the next one. Let's get them all up there. That's the dew symbol, the water symbol, the river symbol. My God, we got a whole lot to go. No one? It's not my fault. It's all of y'all. I'm sorry. They started asking a billion questions. Okay, go, keep go, 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 go. Next slide, next slide. Keep going, keep going. Get it all up there for them real quick. Now, y'all see that right there? Let me just give you this. Do y'all see this? These are all the names that the Holy Spirit is called in Scripture. Advocate, comforter, comforter, counselor, God the Spirit, helper, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Pentecost, the seven spirits of God, Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, Spirit of God, Spirit of grace, Spirit of the Lord, Teacher, Eternal Spirit, the Holy One, the Lord, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of counsel, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Spirit of judgment, the Spirit of burning, the Spirit of knowledge, the Spirit of life, the Spirit of love, the Spirit of might, the Spirit of power, the Spirit of revelation, the Spirit, all of that is in the Bible. So y'all see what I'm saying? This is not philosophy, it's biblical. So when you say you got the Holy Spirit, that's who's in you. Glory to God. All right, go to slide. Holy Spirit in creation. Go to the next one. This is an article. Write this down. All right, go to the next one. Holy Spirit in Christ. Next one. Holy Spirit in com as the comforter. Next week, come back to the Holy Spirit. The teacher is going to be going into the next phase called the second baptism, and they can probably pick it up and take it to the whole next level. I enjoyed our time with you. This was amazing tonight. I love you.